So neutral is a term. Neutral is. <laughs> Explain neutral in one sentence. <laughs> Jumping's broken. As long as you have a resource left, you can't swing against you. That's what I've learned after playing you. Like, if you jump once, I'm like, okay, he has monkey foot. He has a double jump. Okay, he uses double jump. Uh, is he drop banana? Is it monkey flip? I'm just not gonna challenge. And he jumped again. All right, let's start it over. Real quick. <laughs> um, right before the game came out, I was at the walk with Gavin, and Gavin was like, "Dude, if you can dash tilt, like that means that means dash back is gonna be broken." Dude, I was like, "Holy shit, I, I think he's right." <laughs> no, What's your war, opinion no on Northern? I see the occasional WarioWare thing. Ooh. That's age nine. Wear. I had a pocket oh, incineroar yeah. <laughs> just for just for WarioWare, just in case like somebody tried Same. to get I'll, pull, I'll, I'll pull out my incineroar. Okay, Turn so the main topic for today that we wanted to talk about is neutral in Smash, which is I would say a hard and easy topic at the same time. Easy in terms of there's yeah. a lot to talk about. Hard in terms of there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> um, so neutral is a term. Neutral is. <laughs> yeah, neutral is. Neutral is uh... Explain neutral in one sentence. <laughs> I see Termi I like laying down on a chair right next to you. Neutral that, does that not adorable. exist in one term. Okay, you know, I think this is a good way to start this. Now let's, let's compare Smash uh, Neutral to other fighting games. Let's okay. like kind of think about that, right? So like... First off, before we get into that, let me explain why I think it's nice that we're talking about this. I think it's nice because a lot of people will say blah, 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 neutral. And then someone will say like, what are you talking about? Like, what does that mean? Like, I, I need advice, help me. <laughs> and like, and they don't know like what you're saying. Like neutral is, is used to generalize the like the gameplay a lot. So actually talking about it might be interesting, but yeah, let's let's get back into what you're saying, Charles. I just wanted to point that out. Right, and I I just want to say this, you know, first most first off is uh, neutral is like the deepest topic. Um, yeah. In like I'll probably say in any aspect of any fighting game, it's where the most options are present to both players um, at any given moment, which is what makes it so fascinating to watch and play. Um, and with Smash, it's even crazier because um, when you look at a game like Street Fighter or like just other fighting games, right? Like, look at if you just look into the stats, like there's air drift, there's like run speed, walk speed, right? There's so many dynamic stats in Smash, which I think makes Smash Neutral very unique. And I'm not saying like it's harder by any means or easier by any means, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's every pointless. fighting game's neutral is just, you know, has its own depth for its own reasons right and i'm not trying to like you know compare them like that but i'm just saying like with, with smash there's there's so many like weird shit like and it, it 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 comes from like nintendo being a party game but like when you look at it through a competitive standpoint you're like wow this is so crazy like and how drastic you know air drift is run speed walk speed and i mean like you just hear me talking about base stats right now which is why so many people harp on base stats, right? Like, Steve, is he good? Is he not? It's like, he has a bunch of great moves, but, like, his neutral hurts a lot because his base stats are very, very bad. So, it's, these base stats are so important, um, especially for neutral. They're almost they're also important in other aspects of the game. Like, air drift is something that I don't think is talked about enough when recovery is talked about. Air drift is very, very important. But, but yeah, it's also, you know, it's even more important in neutral. So, there's all these different stats that you're applying and even with that there's also range right which is like when you look back at smash 4 cloud with limit you have this insane air drift this insane speed like all his base stats are crazy and then he's drifting away doing the como full space back air like you that's super <laughs> you're not touching that you cannot punish that at all you perfect shield it it doesn't matter so um yeah i guess that's kind of like my opener to neutral but uh, yeah someone else can take it away from there yeah um and then like with smash specifically you start adding platforms and it's just like where do you even start with neutral right um and then like the, the weird thing is like uh so you have jumps this game has different amount of jumps so yeah. like, jump you, can, 
in God. jump heights. Like Falco accelerates very high, but his aerial drift is awful. So yeah. like, do you stay on the ground? Are you trying to challenge that? Um and then you have Fall characters speed. like Meta Knight. Meta Knight has like eight jumps. Peach <laughs> has a float. And you're like <laughs> trying to figure out like all, how to manage all these resources when you're in neutral and it's like okay they jumped one time but what options do they have after they jump they they can peach can float peach can double jump peach can ground float peach can and you're just like peach can do float fastball air dodge and you're like yo what yep. how, how can i how can i like keep track of everything that someone can do in situations in my head and i think that's what makes smash neutral so hard is like a lot of characters and and or like a lot of other games has like predetermined jump arcs or like um they have different like ranges at which they can poke and it's like really easy to learn because a lot of games don't have that many characters but there's so many unique different like ways to play the game uh platform usage which was already mentioned that it's like really really hard to like determine what you should be doing in neutral, which is like a problem that a lot of players have when they're trying to learn the game. Yeah, that's why they like ask what it even is a lot of the time because they, it there's just so much going on in Smash that it's like where do you even start with with actually talking about it? Like, especially considering we've been playing the game for so long, it's something you don't have to think about or talk about. You know what I mean? So right, like, right. honestly, like I'm having trouble even try. Like I don't even know where to start right now because <laughs> it's like I'm like wow like. I, what is I don't even know what neutral is right <laughs> I now. I don't remember. But... I just I just play like it's just part of you know like breathing for me at this point. So like yeah. I don't even it's a it's a crazy difficult topic and it's definitely something that you could put a few hours of conversation into. Yeah, I right. think like, the hardest thing about uh, describing neutral is at first it seems really simple because you're like okay well. Um, don't get hit, yeah. forehead. Yeah, don't get hit. <laughs> don't get hit, but hit them. And you're like, well, how do I do that? Where you're like, well, from this range, they can do what, and you can do what. And yeah. if you outrange them, then it's really easy to make a decision, right? Um, but then it becomes, you got to start doing risk-reward management. Then you got to start doing conditioning. And it's like, bro, what happened? Like, I thought I'd, I just had more range than this person, so I could <laughs> press the button. Or yeah. I had a projectile, so I could press the button. And then I keep pressing the button and I keep getting hit. And it's like, how do you, how do you determine what you should be doing in neutral? And I guess that's really the, the question yeah. uh, that most players struggle with is like, how do you determine what should be done when you're in neutral? Um, so I feel like this is actually... Uh... A nice opportunity for me to describe my thought processes and actually how I view Smash. Um, Ooh. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, uh, I have like a very like specific process when I'm like in terms of neutral and in terms of my opponent. Um, I kind of have like a a process down to like a subconscious where like everything my opponent is doing whether it's options or timings, I I subconsciously remember everything my opponent does in in neutral, all, like even like every aspect of the game, but like it helps with neutral because like we said, there's so much ambiguous stuff. There's so many different timings and base statistics and options. So I'm always paying attention because if I get any like whiff of a habit, or something that's unsafe just by frame data wise because obviously i've paid attention to that with so much experience like that's like all you need to like get some sort of momentum or get ahead of them in the match right because so many people do things and sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing something that's unsafe or that's like they don't even realize they're doing it at the same timing every time there's just so many possible habits you might subconsciously have that you might not even realize are a habit until you get called out for it. Um, sometimes the habit is so rooted into your play that you'll get, you know, hit for it multiple times and you'll, you won't even realize it, that, that, that there's a reason for it. Um, <laughs> so, so that's something that, um, 
it's definitely difficult though because if you want to implement that um it gets hard to if you're gonna consciously note it while you're playing it gets hard to do the basics at some point right like to just play the game if you're so focused on like trying to memorize everything your opponent's doing so it's definitely difficult um but it definitely helps me i've just been doing it for so many years and then like let's say i win neutral and then they're on the ledge i'll like memorize all their ledge timings memorize all their ledge options like there's everything in smash is information that can really hit towards what's going to happen next um i that i would say um to understand it like super in depth it takes years and years and years of experience to actually view things as you know hints towards the future of the match like that's really in depth but it, it's it's definitely useful and it's definitely there's a lot of truth to it um it can even go as simple as the character your opponent's playing there's usually a few variations of general play styles of pe like that character and no and like going into a match with something like that in mind can really help you um with neutral so yeah that's a kind of a general way of how i view the game and it definitely helps me um i guess with my characters i play diddy kong and you know there's a basic way of diddy kong in neutral right like banana in hand equals oh no i have the shield Answer to shield is monkey flip, because monkey flip is a grab. And then another answer is, like, oh, I can't be on the ground. Like, the floor is lava because of banana. <laughs> and then they jump, and then you can anti-air them with the banana. You can monkey flip them, but you can also Z-drop aerial. So, like, that's a neutral, like, you know, the tree, right? Like, right. I have this. They're threatened by this. If they do this, I answer with this. So, oh. I, have the, I have the pleasure of reacting to what my opponent does most of the time because not a lot of characters can just be like oh you have a banana let me do this it's like okay you have a banana let me respect you all right i've been rambling i'll you guys can talk oh, that's fantastic because <laughs> the, the end point is very very true right and Whereas... consistency right that's what you're looking for yeah. in mm -hmm. any character right when you have that kind of stuff so yeah it, it's a really good point because any character that can like Essentially, what he's saying is like Diddy Kong can dictate neutral yeah. simply by having a banana in his hand. Yeah. And so, like, is it even neutral at that point, or am I just yeah. winning? <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's how I feel. I'm like, dude, that's a winning situation. Yeah. Like the part of neutral is like trying to stop him from from getting a banana out. But the moment that the banana's in your hand, it's like, dude, I'm actually in a losing situation. I guess that's but, another unique thing about Smash. It's like. If you try to play a general neutral where you're both at this like this specific range, you're both not you know getting hit or hitting each other. In Smash specifically, it feels like, and it, probably a couple of other characters, archetypes in fighting games, where if you're not forcing some type some type of situation, they're actually winning because um, they're in the typical neutral environment, right? Like, you are letting them do this type of setup or charge this sort of, like, meter or something. It's like, if if you're not if you're not fighting Diddy Kong, if you're not fighting Cloud, if you're not fighting Steve, if you're not fighting Wario, they have all these mechanics that they're getting. Is it actually neutral? I, I, would, I would say it is, but there's, like, some sort of slight difference there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... Cause I feel like you're still playing neutral, but ne it's just the options that Diddy Kong or any of those uh, characters have. Like Cloud gets faster, Diddy Kong has a banana. Um, yeah. The the awareness that you have to have and the way that they play neutral changes. Yeah. Before those characters, uh, it's really easy to use Diddy Kong because it's an item. Um, an item toss out of shield is broken. So before those characters, and he has a command grab. Before those characters, like, get or before Diddy gets his, like, banana out, he has to play a certain way to either hit you away from him, or if you're not committing as well, then he can just pull the banana out, right? Yeah. So you're, like, trying to figure out the timings of 
how they like to like keep you away or the timing of it, are they just going to pull the banana out yeah and then it's like different based on which is another thing we haven't really talked about is people choose different options based on what percent they're at because then you have to start manage that's like risk reward management they're not gonna just pull out a banana in your face when they're at 150 because it's like dude you, you're just gonna die for that yeah, so yeah. You, you have to start thinking about stuff like that as well and it's like what I think the one of the most important things with like understanding or learning how to understand neutral is just being aware of what your opponent can and can't do in situations. Because yeah. I think that's where a lot of people fail. Um, is that they'll like get hit by something like I didn't even know they could do that. Um, and that's just part of studying the game. And as you said earlier, like experience is really yeah. situational really awareness. Big. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think um, you had a really interesting point about like um, so you have to look out f- like for characters that get stronger just by being on the screen or, or having the space to do so there's a lot of characters that can do that um, stronger in some way whether it's gaining an item or throwing projectiles or some sort of meter right um, I, I think um, so you have to understand that this is still neutral but if you give them enough time they get stronger and whether you choose to respect that or not is up to you there's definitely a bunch of ways to go about it um but in a way like you said you have to understand like when do they when do they throw their projectile when do they pull their item when do they charge their meter and i guess in a way it might even make neutral easier for you if you are looking out for them to you know do their thing like 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 with with Diddy <laughs> Play specific, their game. with Diddy specifically like I I know like I play Diddy and we're talking about him specifically but it's a lot easier because it's as simple as literally just a banana so like in neutral you have to look out for do they want to make space or do they want to get the banana or do they already have it in a way um Diddy simplifying the neutral also makes it easier for you to play it because do you have the opportunity to understand when he's going to do one of those three things? Um, so that's an interesting way of looking at it. I don't know if I've ever even looked at it that way in terms of fighting one of those characters. Um, at least consciously like talking about it. So yeah, I guess in a way, like if the, if a character simplifies neutral so much that in a way, like, you, you kind of don't you kind of get to look out for less things because <laughs> they're not like a typical like you know brawler or something unless right. it's, the thing is that strong like yeah. probably for example like yeah it's just speed forward air back or grab in there and you're like bro this is yeah what is that's always now? the funniest thing it's like this character isn't that good because they're so linear <laughs> it yeah. If, the, if the option is that good <laughs> does it matter i don't care how linear it is i'm gonna keep pressing this back here and if you can't do anything about it i don't it doesn't matter if it's linear that's always so funny when people are like yeah and like relate that the to the part, tier list for the most part like if your character can play their game i feel like that's generally what you're looking at right like i feel like one of the first check marks or just like general things you should be looking at it's like okay so Fox, for example, right? Um, if if Fox is able to pressure your shield, then he's playing his game, right? But characters he struggles against is characters that don't let him put himself in that situation, right? So if Fox is nairing your shield constantly because his nair can beat out your air-to-air moves, then Fox probably wins neutral, like, against that character, right? Um, and even Snake. There's very few characters in the game that force Snake to not play his game. And then when you get into those characters that make snake not able to play his game and he's got to play different that doesn't necessarily mean he loses but nine out of ten times it does mean he like loses the situation or the matchup or whatnot right um but there it's like it's like joker right like joker is a character that literally has so many tools at his disposal like he might not always be able to play his game but just because he can't play his game doesn't mean he can't play another type of way, right? Which, like, uh, you know, a lot of us here agree that that character is not even completely fleshed out. Character can do so much more in the current meta in terms of just, like, um, just what the character does. He can pretty much just, like, do everything, almost get out of every situation. So it's like, if your character can't play their game, 
that's when I think people start falling apart. That's when their lack of knowledge starts like really hitting them, right? Because it's like, oh crap, shit, um, fuck, I can't like nair someone's shield or damn it, like you know what I mean? Like I can't do what I usually do in this neutral situation. Now I have to like, I feel like that's when people start breaking down in a sense of like, shit, now what? Um, what tool is beating me? And that's where like where you guys were talking about where it bounced off of originally is like ha- that, that lack of game knowledge will really start shitting on you because it's like, well, why can't I play my usual game? And if you can't even answer that and you don't know what the tools are that are beating you and why they're beating you, you can't even like really think of a counter act, right? Like, and yeah, it's just, I, I think like at very surface level, you just have to start asking yourself like one you have to know your character right like you can't you can't know if your game is beating out or like what your character usually does is getting beaten out if you don't even know what your character is supposed to be doing and that's really easy just look at top level play and all that stuff watch what other top level players are doing with your character and yeah and then from there kind of like kind of decipher like every character's game and like that's what makes smash so cool is there's there's so many different types of er- character archetypes and then there's like mix of character archetypes right and then how do they their tools interact with other people's tool and even though the term is neutral that doesn't mean like it's really neutral neutral just means like no one has like a severe advantage state you pretty much are, have ac- access to all your options but some characters will beat other characters out in the neutral state right yeah. Which is the most common part. So usually if a character wins neutral, it's a really, really big deal. You you have to have some pretty crazy redeeming qualities to be like, oh, this character shits on me in neutral, but like if I hit this character though, like I like completely destroy him. Yeah. I think um you were mentioning like a character playing their game. I think um that's one of the more interesting things that's actually gonna come back to what we were talking about with base stats. So let's talk about um, two characters that are kind of talked about as being like you know very basic very fundamental very you know like neutral heavy which are like wolf palutena those are like the some classic characters uh like top tier characters um nothing too specific with um like they don't have any specific tricks up their sleeve they're just they have ridiculous base stats they have some great just general poking moves and all that stuff so some great projectiles. So they just have a bit of everything, right? Um, yeah. You're all around it, so to speak. You were talking about like, oh, if your character can't play their typical game, that's where it gets really weird, and that's where you have to really dig deep. Um, something interesting about Wolf and Palutena is they don't necessarily have a playing their game. They do what is needed to be done to win the matchup. So, Very true nothing specifically is going to counter them because they have the freedom um, of choosing how they want to play the match. Um, So some characters have that freedom, but not to the same degree. That's why Wolf and Palutena are valued so heavily. Um, But yeah, that's something that's really valuable about base stats like speed, um, aerial mobility, um, some general burst options, some sort of projectile, uh, some sort of reflector, to where you don't have to play a certain way specifically. Like um, with Wolf, you can do these crazy combos and like suicide Wolf Flash combos, or you can just press laser all game until the game is over, which is usually what I'm known to do. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, um, I would say something that um, I think some players get some tunnel vision um, with their character's play style. Um, You're talking about Fox specifically. I think um, Fox doesn't have the same freedom as Wolf or Palutena, but he has some general speed. Like, he's really fast on the ground. Um, And he has some great um, frame data. Um, So, in, in a way, he can definitely, like, play the more defensive style you can definitely like poke a bit more it's gonna he's gonna get a lot less damage and a lot less early kills you probably won't get any early kills with this style but um there's an example of him playing a match a little differently uh, and then um there's other characters like let's say like like little mac easiest example right like this character doesn't have the freedom to be like okay 
this play style isn't working. Let me adjust to this play style. Like that's not an option because you have a handful of things that are are valuable and you don't even have you don't have access to the platforms of the air or like aerials. So that definitely um I think is a nice explanation of neutral and like characters like play styles and like you know why this affects the tier list like because look at Little Mac, a character with not much, you know, options to him. And then look at Wolf and Palutena, which are like, it's basically infinite with what they want to do. And they're basically top and bottom of the tier list. So that's just a point I wanted to make based on what Charles was saying about, you know, play styles and, you know, a character playing their game. Dang, that's an interesting way to look at it. <laughs> Right, and that's I I feel like that's a big part of just like low tiers in general, right? Where it's like, okay, you have this one, two, three, maybe four really really good moves, right? Like, um, I mean, let's take Bowser Jr. for example. I mean, I'm not saying he's a bottom tier or whatever. He's probably like a mid tier or whatever. Please don't <laughs> hunt me down on Twitter. He's not bottom tier, dude. There are some. He people actually there. beats Lucas. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, dude, who cares? He's not high tier. This but matchup like, okay, is so actually six four. <laughs> like junior has a handful of pretty good moves right but the thing is when your other moves aren't that great and you only have a handful of good moves guess what your game becomes like now you have yeah. a game you know that that's the problem that's the issue with a lot of these top tiers like tweak was saying you can play them in so many different ways in so many different situations against so many different characters and you have that like jack of all trades kind of deal where it's just like okay projectile check reflector check speed check range check combos check like you know what i mean like you're 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 hitting every check mark which is really really good and very very versatile which is why Politana and wolf are you know known through the competitive scene as the most common pockets because it's like oh like i've had a lot of people ask me like oh if i main diddy who should i pocket and i'm like well if wolf kind of just shits on all of diddy's bad matchups because <laughs> it's just and and that's just the nature of the character wolf's matchup chart in general is just so good right so it's like when you for the most part if you're maining a character like you're losing matchups like nine times out of ten paul or wolf probably wins them or like does even so it's like oh copy paste your fundamentals and like if you're a better player like you should be fine against the player that is like beating you because they're um you know they're forcing you into a really really bad matchup right so it's like that that's this is a super important aspect to like just look out for and that's why you know characters like steve it's kind of worrying right like where is this character on the tier list it's really hard because he invalidates certain characters with like some ridiculous moves and like just characters that can't really recover low he like completely shuts them down but then like when you're going up like when when steve steve i actually think steve's worst matchups are like up there like with with his worst matchups are apollo and wolf and yeah. like those are the two characters we're talking about because they just have everything they need to shut him down and then he doesn't have like the base stats to like deal with them and yeah. then like the handful of good moves that are like super broken paul and wolf are just like oh i don't care about those i have like this this move that counters it and it's just like done so yeah, yeah. i guess yeah. that's something that like really helps with matchup charts is like your character's freedom of play styles like it's just how it is. Like, if your character's limiting in some aspect, it's really going to hurt, you know, their general matchup chart. Because if you don't have a bit of everything, some character that you're up against probably will have X thing. And it's just an interesting, a really simple way to look at, you know, how matchups work in Smash. It's like, well, if you're missing this, then. <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be hard in this area. What were you saying, Marcus? I straight forgot, bro. Shit. I'm not even gonna lie. My I bad, was like, my bad. I was like, no, I was like thinking something, and then I read chat, and then I was like, yo, yeah, what? there's too much going on. What? <laughs> Mr. Krabs, me. <laughs> dude, that's probably one of my favorite. <laughs> where, where do we even look? It's a classic, dude. I see, I see six people, hundreds of people in chat. Bunch of words. Who would have thought SpongeBob would have just been like the best meme generator? Like when you're growing up as a kid and you're like, dang, this show is so good. Like who would have thought? Like, oh, actually, it's just gonna be like one of the best like meme generators out there. Yeah. 
watching it as a kid and you're just like yeah i'm gonna use all these faces on the internet in 10 years (laughs) are we going stageless or not I think we can still talk about neutral. Like yeah, I, I kind of want to dig I'm into like ultimate neutral. Neutral, neutral okay, is like good. so easy oh, and hard at the same time. Um, yeah. Like, what do you guys think are the strongest tools in ultimate? Everybody like, jumping's broken. Um, right. but I but I jumps infinitely. You jump a ton. Yes. I always jump. <laughs> as long as you have a resource left, you can't swing against you. That's what I've learned after playing you. Like. If you jump once, I'm like, okay, he has monkey flip. He has. Give me a minute. I'll be back. <laughs> he has a double jump. Okay, he uses double jump. Uh, is Z drop banana? Is it monkey flip? I'm just not going to challenge. And he jumped again. All right, let's start it over. <laughs> like, jumping in this game, everybody having a three frame jump squat and the, like, the speed on screen at which you like so to like the top of your your jump height is insane. And some characters actually have a broken short hop, and I will never stop talking about this. Fox's short hop is the most broken, I swear it is the most broken thing about the character. Like, it, you can't have a 17 frame short hop fast fall, because the human, average human reaction time is like 14 frames or something like that. So like, by time you see it, especially with the input delay in the game, you're just like, okay, I have to guess. And that's dumb. Like, yeah. of course, in, in neutral, you avoid the situation of him getting close enough to where he can short hop right in front of you, right? But, like, having that option and, like, that also kind of forces movement, unless you can actually react to that, it's like, bro, what is that? But, yeah, jumping in this game is, like, insane. The hitboxes are gigantic. Charles always complains about auto L canceling, so... Yeah, the people just land with buttons, which honestly, at first, uh, I think when you're first learning the game, it's like, yo, I'm just it's gonna fun. jump. But then it's after fun. after time goes on, you start noticing that everybody's jumping, and you're like, bro, I'm just gonna stay on the ground, and like, you're gonna buffer a jump because people are, which is another very important thing that goes along with timings, uh, is that people like just start buffering options the moment, like especially when they get momentum, like if they like hit your shield with a nair, they will immediately buffer something after. And it's like, bro, like, you're trying to read me in a situation that's, like, not even advantageous to you. You're just trying to make a read. Like, and it doesn't, you're just, like, forcing, and I think that's where a lot of people fail in neutral in this game is, like, they spend a lot of time trying to, like, force situations that aren't there where they're like, okay, I'm gonna F smash this dude's landing. And it's like, okay, but he still has like seven different resources left and he can choose the directional air dodge like you you're committing so hard i don't i don't understand but jumping's broken people mash but i think the game's moving away from people mashing as as much as once you get to the higher higher levels i think i want to basically like make a point off what you're talking about with like you know people buffering options after their safe option like this is a typical ultimate thing that people get really frustrated with. Um, I guess I want to word it as like people forcing guesses, people forcing some sort of advantage state to start. It's like, so um, in ultimate, every character has three frame jump squat. Every character has some sort of like, not every character, but um, a general play style is um, some sort of safe ish button on shield whether it's safe actually or safe ish into some sort of reversal attempt, whether it be another quick move, whether it be a spot dodge into a quick move or something like that. That's the ultimate. Um, it's really forcing something to happen and they're really trying to bait their opponent into doing some sort of punish and then they get a reversal out of their attempt. So, um, my main goal when I'm playing ultimate, especially if I'm playing against someone that really has this tor- this sort of style, which is very common, um, I literally, my play style is to minimize any guessing, minimize like anything like that. So I actually, um, I don't know if people notice this or whatever, but I do not roll or spot dodge nearly as much as like anyone else. Um, and this isn't because I don't want any sort of reversals, but my play style is more so to ignore that aspect of the game as much as possible because I'm trying to play to consistently win as much as possible. So 
unless the guessing has some sort of risk reward in my favor based on the stock count or the percents you won't really see that for me as much um and i i'm hoping as time goes on people switch to that to where they're not gonna force things like they would rather stand there than then do like some sort of crazy spot dodge into a bunch of buttons you know what i mean like i would rather press nothing i would rather shield a move that is you know might be unsafe and i would rather take the risk of of not going for the punish to see what they do after um punishing what they do after if they start consistently doing it a lot is way easier to punish than the first thing they did right like let's say fox does neutral air on shield like we've been talking about that's not easy to deal with but let's say he up tilts your shield after that's a lot yep. less safe or jabs like they yeah just, they go for another swing right yeah like... so i'd rather like and let's say let's say they're not mashing on you right let's say they grab you right after that because they're they're already thinking ahead okay <sighs> You know, you got a lot of information just off that split second, right? It's like, all right, I you have a better sense for how they play ultimate, for how their their style. They're not necessarily like you know freaking out with the buttons. They're they're playing quite calculated. So then there's a lot for you to work with there, and it's all because you waited it out just a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's that's like my thought process. Minimizing guessing and not forcing things is really nice. Um, having a character that complements that is really great too. Um, like, let's say like with Wolf where you, you have access to a projectile. So like you can really wait out in neutral and you can really get a lot of information and stuff like that. Like there's just, there's a lot of ways to go about playing the game than just ramming into your opponent and trying to force something to happen. And playing very like hopeful like i hope this works i hope they fall for this spot dodge into smash attack you know what i mean right i i honestly think that kind of play is and like i i can even speak to this as like experience like when i competed in smash 4 um like there's a certain point especially if you're playing against someone that you feel like is better than you or you feel like has better neutral than you um like i've been in situations where it's like damn i i can't like I like literally subconsciously think to myself as I'm competing, like, damn, this guy's PGR'd. Like, okay, I'm playing. Like, dude, damn, beat me in three neutral interactions. Or I can't, like, I can't out neutral this guy. Like, I'm just going to start fucking winging out these dash attacks or dash grabs <laughs> and, like, just start to, for like, make this guy start guessing because, like, I don't have faith in my neutral, which is, like, which isn't bad. Um, I think you do that in some situations, but, like, that's, that's generally not good, especially that's really not good if you're practicing. If you're just grinding, you need to grind out your neutral. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're if you're in a tournament and you really just feel that way and you're just like and I've seen people get upset by this where it's just like, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna go for the yellow up smash because like I'm I don't think I can out neutral this guy. Like I I'm just gonna go for like this crazy hard read and catch this guy totally off guard because he's he has faith that I'm like trying to neutral him, right? So it's like and it, and it works not. It's not consistent, right? Which is why usually you're not going to see players like Tweak do that because you know when when someone's career is on the line, like they're they're going to look for very consistent options, right? They're going to have faith in their reaction. They're going to have faith in their neutral stuff that they've like catered and grinded for years, right? Um, and the reason why they're able to do that is um, this is one thing that I kind of like to talk about. I call it like a the refresh rate of a player, and um, it's going to go back off of what Gavin was talking about with uh, people buffering options in neutral. Um, this is most people do this because their refresh rate of the game is not as fast as the other player. So when when Gavin's playing the game and he doesn't even have to think when he's doing this, or even Pink, like just really experienced players, like when they're playing the game, their their refresh rate of neutral is like way faster than most other players. So it's like oh boom, this hits on shield. Now what is happening? Like they're not saying that in their head, but they're 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 mindful of what is going on interaction to interaction like and they know the windows where it's like okay boom now we can do something here okay did what do you do okay the next interaction but other people their refresh rate isn't as fast so they have to take guesses they're like like sometimes i'll i'll like be coaching someone and i'm like you know coaching a lower level player and i'll be like 
you made that decision to dash attack when you ran all the way on the left side of the screen. Like you cross stage dash attack this dude and he wasn't even there. <laughs> but like you you ran on the left side of the stage and you started running and then like you're not refreshing the situation. Like he's not there anymore. Like by the time you hit halfway across the stage, he already full hopped. But then like you kept going and you dash attack because you made the decision when you dashed from the left side of the stage, you're like, I'm dash attacking right here. And you didn't change your mind. There's a lot of situations in neutral where you're like, okay, I'm going to do this. But then like it, it has to change because like you're, you refresh the situation like five frames later, 10 frames later, it's different. Right. So it's like, you, you have to have that refresh rate. And the only reason, or the only way you get better at having a faster refresh rate is you stop guessing you actually like put yourself in a situation where it's like okay boom and then you're probably gonna get fucked for it because you're bad at it but that's fine you know what i mean because you're gonna try to like hit someone you and be like okay i need i need to like see what the situation is after and then like you get hit because you're not quick enough or your reactions aren't good enough but that is okay because you're you're trying to play neutral you're trying to have the same refresh rate as like these top players and you're trying to take these situations by situations by situations instead of like clumping it all together like i hit shield and i'm just going to swing again and instead of doing that you're going to i'm i'm going to hit shield and like try to comprehend and see what happens and make a decision after that instead of just like clumping it all together it's like that that those string of like three to four situations there it's three to four situations and you need to refresh every single one but a lot of players just clump it all together and it's just like i'm falling down with fox in there and i'm fucking doing some more shit like i'm swinging regardless i don't, I don't give a fuck what happened i've seen people in there and i've done this myself i've dropped down in there and this person rolls away and i'm still still throwing out the jab like i made the decision to throw out the jab before i even hit anything and i didn't even hit anything you know what i'm saying i think so that's a big deal I think um, something I also want to stress that I don't want anyone to forget is that Ultimate still has a lot of guessing going on, and it's not even just scenarios like this. Um, fighting games have guesses. Um, some characters force it more than others, um, and like you know, it's a guess. You're not. It's not your fault. You're not. You know, it's just how it is. Um, you can try to minimize it and like. You know, take advantage of the situations that aren't guesses to get ahead of the game, so you can afford to guess, uh, guess incorrectly more, whatever. But, um, so this ultimate situation we talk about all the time, which is a really funny way to word it, um, uh, like with a move into spot dodge into spot dodge reversal. This situation is going to happen. It's not your fault. It's not your fault for doing it either. Um. <laughs> But something I want to stress is gauging the risk reward before you do it and, and stuff like that. And gauging their risk reward while they're doing it. Like let's say let's say you're at 0% last stock, they're at 150 last stock. And they do something ambiguous on your shield, and you're not positive if you have the punish to it, right? In this situation, you don't have to do anything. Um, you don't have to risk um, getting hit by their you know they're looking for their big opening to like even up the game or get some sort of crazy right. guess into like looking for that one Paul yeah like, they, they, they one have something there. in mind right <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you don't have to force anything you, you, all you need is your straight hit and the game is over right so if you're mm -hmm. not sure based on the numbers or based on their positioning or whatever, or based on your out of shield options. You don't have to guess here. <laughs> um, you can keep holding but shield. You can try to reset. Yeah, but they do. They're gonna force something. So that's another thing. And let's say, let's say you're winning by a lot as well. Like another situation where you're winning, but you're the one, you know, pressing the, the advantage. Like you're the one trying to open them up. Um, go for it go for this like cheeky spot dodge reversal into something that's unsafe or something see what happens get the information you need because the game is not going to end regardless of what happens here right so that's what i see from every level of play um top level high level low level everyone is doing this but i feel like gauging the risk reward is a different story for a lot of these players sometimes it's you know they're nervous or they really they're really desperate so that's something I really want to stress to people. Try to pay attention to the risk reward. Like 
is it even worth doing this right now? Or am I just doing this because I don't know what else to do? <laughs> right, so, yeah. right, where it's more of just like an instinctual panic option, right? Yeah. Like, and that, again, you're, you, you gotta have confidence in your neutral. And even if you don't have the confidence, like when you're practicing, you have to like consciously try to improve your neutral. Like you, you'll never get better and you're, I, I, and I won't say you'll never get better, but you will definitely stunt your growth in terms of neutral if you just like force guessing all the time. Um, and this is like, this is a big thing too when I'm, you know, coaching all of lower level players. Like I can't, I can't critique somebody's neutral. I can't critique somebody's spacing. I can't critique any of that. If all you do is run in and dash attack, like where's where's the neutral, right? Like you're again, you're forcing you're forcing commitment, right? And here the thing about the thing about committing, and I remember when this game first dropped, right? And I was like, I'm looking at the game, and you know it's like the first couple months, and I was talking to Light, and Light was like, dude, I'm just gonna rush everybody down, I'm gonna <laughs> fuck everybody up, and I'm just like. This game's not like that, dude. I, I know it feels like that at first because everyone was like, oh, you can dash tilt. Like, <laughs> this game's going to be so aggro, like, blah, blah, blah. And after the first couple, I remember, I remember um, right before the game came out, I was at the loft with Gavin. And Gavin was like, dude, if you can dash tilt, like, that means, that means dash back is going to be broken. And he was like, dude, what if this game is like, so like, because everyone in Smash 4 thought this game was going to be like super aggro, super crazy hype. Right? I was the one Gavin, human being. Right. Gavin was just like, I don't know, man. Dash back is probably going to be like super broken. And like, I just remember being in Gavin's room and being like, oh, I was fuck. so scared. I was so dude, scared. I was like, dude, I was like, holy shit. I, I think he's right. <laughs> and then the game dropped. Right. And then, um, yeah, Light was like, yeah, I'm going to rush everyone down. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, dude, you're going to have to bring out the laser, bro. And sure enough three or like maybe four or five months in i saw light bringing out that laser and i was like <laughs> i was like yep i mean obviously you can still play more pressure orientated but like you can't commit over and over again um and the reason being is okay here's and like this is what i hate about cross stage commitments like you you don't do this top players just generally don't do this like you don't see a top player run from right side of the stage to the left side of the stage and then throw a the dash attack or something like they might here and there but like the reason why committing is so hard okay so you one, you have to win the RPS, right? Like, I run up on somebody, they're shielding. Like, are they going to spot dodge? Are they going to jump? Are they going to attack or whatever, right? Like, you have to win the generalized RPS, right? On top of that, how far were you when you are engaging this commitment? Did they reposition themselves, right? Like, not only do you have to hard read the RPS, you have to hard read where your opponent's going to be when you make the commitment. You are reading them times two, all right? That's really hard. You know what I mean? Like that that's not an easy thing to do. Like and you you should do that at a very minimal part and if you're trying to improve if you're trying to work on your neutral, that's like going to be the very first thing you got to do. You got to like just stop committing as much. You can still make commitments here and there. Um and obviously there's always like context to it, right? Like, oh, does he have no double jump, right? Like, did he did he try to double jump bait me in neutral? Now he has no double jump. Now, now the risk reward is way more in your favor because now resources are burned, right? Now make a commitment. Now go for the up smash. Now try to anti air with some something, right? Like, it makes more sense. So, um, yeah, just and and then on top of that with the refresh rate and all that other jazz, there, there's a bunch of ways to work on your neutral, but that's like base level like first thing i always tell people when they're trying to work on neutral and i'm trying to critique their neutral is like that's like the first thing is just the amount of commitments a lot of players make is really big and even like e technically even hitting someone with like a you know a, some kind of something something spot dodge right like that's like the ultimate situation um even that is a commitment it's not as a big of a commitment as like a dash attack or something like that but it's still technically a commitment because when you get to the higher levels of play like players start punishing that really hard. Like, they'll be in shield. Oh, you spot dodge right in front of me? Up smash. Up B. Like, you will get fucked for that really, really hard if you do it too much. And, and that's why even Gavin said, you, you do it here and there, and you more so do it for information. But you're, it's not, it shouldn't be a core aspect of your gameplay. Okay. I actually thought it was hilarious that you mentioned, like, us watching Ultimate, like, the demo and whatnot, like, before it came out. Right, right. <laughs> and I remember everyone was like, yo, this game is going to be crazy, like, melee status, like, we're going to be, like, <laughs> games are going to be over in 10 seconds. And I, like, I was just having this, like, 
this like moment like watching the demo and i was just like looking into the future and i was like this is gonna suck dude this is gonna <laughs> suck so bad like <laughs> i was just like witnessing like basically the meta we're in now i'm not like i actually am enjoying ultimate more than ever i've been having a great time um like mostly the characters i'm playing like it's just been really fun like i'm not trying to shit on ultimate that heavy it's it's mostly just funny but yeah this game is super defensive and um i just i just knew it <laughs> i just knew it was happening like i i knew it was all like it was all going to be like aggression quote unquote like yeah if you're watching and spectating like and you're not like digging too deep into what's going on it's gonna look aggressive which is that's because great the combos are long right advantage yeah. state is brutal right just because somebody does like a 50 percent combo doesn't mean he's aggro like <laughs> if he dashed back and then dashed back in for the combo starter like well he definitely just you know did a dash back which is strong but it is defensive right but then i feel like most people they'll they'll like see like the combo or the sick edge guard after and be like yo man this guy's so aggro it's just like <laughs> well actually like you know what i mean like it's, yeah. it's 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 all it just depends on how much you actually know about neutral and whether or not if it's like if they're just spamming defensive options or not and the best you know, thing you about know ultimate um, is that it's eye candy and it's so easy to watch I think yes. th I think it's a great thing for the for the spectators for sure. Amazing. Yeah. For the players, it's all like subjective at that point, right? It's like, right. Okay. If you choose to get angry at it, then get angry at it. But at the end of the day, like you gotta accept it. Yep. Because uh... we definitely ain't going back to Smash Four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm about to get DQ'd. So. I... Oh, you're in a bracket. Yeah, I got. The host of Invitational. Go play, bro. Um, <laughs> Leave it to us, man. I don't really, it's, bro, I don't... At Subi, I don't really... I mean, it's whatever. It's, like, it's, it's been, like, about bro. an hour. Also, yeah, I'm just I'm... eating this Taco Bell, bro. Let me mute my mic. Dude, I love... I love... But it's this is, like, one of my favorite subjects to talk about, so I'm, like... Bro, There's so much to talk about, about, right? Yeah. We didn't even get into stage control. Like, <laughs> that's a whole huge aspect. Of of just like neutral in general that I I don't think people value right. Oh for sure, people just dude. What the thing that makes me the angriest is when I'm playing against someone and they have a killing back throw and you're at the edge of the stage and they do run up roll behind. I'm like, dude, like <laughs> you you bet it all on me not reacting to your roll and just holding shield. And now that it didn't happen, you are stuck in the corner. Like, why did you do that? it that that makes no sense to me i'm just like bro just hold the position like i as a player know that you have a killing back throw so i'm scared of that like the moment i see the roll, i'm gone you're jumping I'm yes. out. and that's just going <laughs> like doing his animation where he like whiffs the grab <laughs> but <laughs> if, like... yeah but if like you just stand there i'm like yo what can i do i'm 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 spooked like yo why are you just standing there like do something like Make an action, like, <laughs> so that's the thing is like, uh, which I think a lot of people don't prey on is that like, uh, a lot of people have like anxiety, like when they get in like a corner and like in a very uncomfortable situation. So they will panic, they choose a panic option. That's why you hear people say like, oh, they like panic rolled or they panic shield or they panic whatever. Like the, they choose a panic option because they're exact, their heart rate starts going, yo, my blood pressure's up. I, <laughs> uh, and they just, they just do something so, like, Stand in, in a range where, like, they can't do anything to threaten you is so spooky. It's just like, yo, he, I can't hit him, but they can hit me. I got to get out this situation. Like, you know, like, yeah. and that's, that's yeah. just something that a lot of people don't value when it comes to stage control. I'll be in the corner and I'll be like, full hot monkey flip to the other <laughs> yeah, side of the like, screen right now. <laughs> get away, bro. Danger. <laughs> No, but actually, danger, danger. I just I I just be standing there and just try to react to what they're doing. Oh, well, your reaction time, so do you? <laughs> I just like, all right, calm down. <laughs> they will never expect this. I'll actually stay in the corner. <laughs> yeah, or even like walking out of the corner is something that yeah, I don't think just, enough people just do. Inching, like, just inching forward. Yeah, just claim a little bit of stage control. 
And because, I mean, you've probably heard us say the option dash back how many times, you know, throughout this podcast. And I mean, I think we could all agree that's probably the most common slash best um, neutral option, right? It's like the safest. And in terms of like what you can get out of a dash back, like the risk reward for it's really good, right? Um, but guess what? You can only do dash back if you got stage. Because if you're in the corner and you do a dash back, you are now off stage, which is very not good. <laughs> so yep. um, you have to uh, earn the right to do the most common, the best, uh, you know, neutral option in the game, and that all stems off of stage control and how you how you control that, right? And it varies from stage to stage. It's very different. Um, even uh, you know, we're talking about the corner. I also want to talk about platforms and. Platforms are a big deal because you cannot do an aerial and fall through a platform. Um, now, this is something that you'll you'll see top level players do, is they will delay their aerial right as they pass the platform. Okay, and this is this is something really hard to do. Um, it just takes really impeccable timing. It's a little easier if you have a floatier character. Harder the faster faller your character is because your frame windows are just the window you have to do it is larger. But like um, you know you. I, and I see Tweak do this many times, where it's like he he's he someone's camping underneath the platform because it's like you cannot aerial me because I am under a platform, right? And they can like even spam an anti air option because if you start your aerial at the platform and they come down, um, they get stopped, right? But if you delay your aerial, you fall past the platform, then you aerial, right? Obviously, you're open this whole time. The whole time you don't have any hitbox covering you, so you can just get hit, which you know again makes the platform really strong and a huge part of neutral. But yeah. Um, that's like a really big deal. Obviously, you have movement options around the platform. Like wave landing isn't as strong as it is in other games like melee or PM or whatever, but um, still a pretty decent option, right? Um, and yeah, it's uh, well, just resource management. We keep going back to this word resource management. There's so many different resources. Even like we we're talking about items before, there's even characters that spawn things that you can interact with, but they are not an item. Hydra. <laughs> The gun can, the the gunman. These are things that are spawned on the map, but they are not an item. And this started becoming a thing in what Smash Four, I want to say. I don't know if there's anything in Brawl that was like it spawn like a character spawned something, but it wasn't an item. I, I can't really think of any. So, I I, th right, so I, that was like it's definitely like a Smash Four thing for the most part. I would expect. Right, right. So it's like you know these games are introducing newer and newer mechanics as we go forward and even stuff like you know the hydrant water pushing you like there's there's so many different stuff that oh, you can like interact dude. with in the game. yo yeah. the waddle d's from brawl i miss that so much. <laughs> i was like oh okay the rng gordo right. that killed you at 70 right. i feel bad oh. rivers has been waiting for like 20 minutes so i i'm gonna head out but y'all can keep going all right mind. thanks for having me good luck yeah oh, good luck in your adventure Start spot dodging right now. Go. Oh, I'm already doing it. Let's go. <laughs> go There's spot dodge up smash. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> Raw, right. Raw DDD was my favorite Smash character, man. All time favorite Smash character. I miss that fat bastard. DDD, like to me, DDD is not even in this game. Like he's just not there. He's not, he's not I'm even still waiting DDD. on the patch. Where tires are an item. I'm still waiting. Oh, dude. Yeah, see, Brawl tires. That Six or seven years item. later, I'm still waiting. I'm dude, waiting. You could, you could probably, like, if you had a tire, oh my goodness. Best Your character in the game. Be good. Best character yeah. in the game. He would be insane. I'm waiting. So, I mean, I guess uh, I guess we could go in a stage list if you want to keep going. Yeah. One more thing about tires. <laughs> Do you One guys more. remember that tip you would get? When you were starting up a yep. match in Wii U, and it would say the tires were an item. Yep. They yep. meant to have them as an item in four. And they just, instead of giving the items, instead of making them an item actually, they took the tip out. Yep. They're like, ooh, whoopsie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we forgot to do that. Damn, dude. And now look he at He needed Wario. it in Smash 4. He yeah. needed it so badly. He, he needed was... it, dude. And that now look at my ultimate so low tier bad. trash. Now he's low tier, bro. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Wario agenda never stopped. <laughs> he needs it. But yeah, so stage list. This is this is an interesting topic. I think it became a lot more interesting with the addition of some of these stages. Um, obviously, I I think without 
small battlefield. Uh, we you can't really have a debate over st at least hazards on hazards off. I think small battlefield made it so like a hazards on stage because we tried switching in between the two, right? Having both, it's just in a TO perspective, there's no world where that works, right? No, it just makes everything way too hard. I don't think it works. Right, so you got to pick one or the other. Like doing um, that mid set just doesn't sound right. Like switching the rule sets there. mid set. No. Right. And I've also seen the argument of uh, where you have the stage list. Like, there's a. So, like, when you go to select stage list, the stage lists are named by the stages. And you pick, like, you pick Pokemon Stadium 2, and it has. A, that, I've seen that. Um, again, not the best thing logistically for a TO, just because you have to create that many rule sets on that many switches. And you think these, these really big tournaments, it ain't just like your local with 20 switches, man. It's. <laughs> It's yeah. a lot of fucking switches. Uh, you're you're talking hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of switches. So, um, I understand that that is it. That does work, but like I also understand a TO not wanting to hire somebody, you know, to go set up all those switches. That's a, that's a lot of fucking work. I, so it's like, yeah. I think. So th there's a couple things with like. People that are deep into competitive Smash, when you talk about rule set, there's some people that think, you know, the more stages, the better. There's some people that are very simplistic and will just have a handful of stages at most. There's some people yep. that want hazards. There's some people that don't want hazards. Some people want this stage specifically. A lot of people don't. Like, As for me, um, I'm definitely less is more for the most part. Um... I'm pretty indifferent when a rule set changes in terms of the stages. Um, for me, what I want is consistency across all tournaments. Um, right. Uh, obviously, like you know, like I have the influence to like help out and like make tier, uh, stage list myself and try to make suggestions, which I haven't. So I'm not gonna blame anyone. Like, you know. I'm, I guess I'm somewhat at fault too. Not really, but okay. Moving on. <laughs> uh, I, I would like if there was the same rule set every time for every tournament. So as someone that does, plays this game for a living, it doesn't feel like I'm playing a different game every tournament. Like that's- Which is really frustrating. That's terrifying. Like, like it's like, oh, it has these stages. Oh, and then there's the timer, which is part of the stage list. Um, whether Which is a lot. It's a lot bigger of a deal than a lot of people think. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Like, um, like seven or eight minutes is like it's changing all the time. Stages, stage lists are changing every tournament. Like, it feels a lot less consistent and competitive when the stage list is differing. Like every major, it's especially all, like offline. Like when like it's all counting for the same PGR. But we're all playing, we're playing on different stage lists every tournament and like different timer. It's like, you're, it's like, when, when is it going to be consistent? We're, we're a couple of years in, like, when is it going to be a universal thing? Cause there's no way we can't figure that out. Um, I think it's one of the most important things for competitive smash right now that hasn't been addressed as much as it should be. Um, And it's not even like I necessarily like disagree with any of these stage lists. I just want it to be the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it, it it's funny because when the game launched and we uh, we heard they're bringing all the stages back, right? It was like everyone was like popping off like, yeah, you know, this is going to be so awesome. But like it's kind of a double-edged sword because now that we have all these options, it's really hard to really funnel down to a stage list that feels fair or equal to everybody, right? Um, with Smash 4, it wasn't hard to get a stage list in a year that everyone was just like, yep. I mean, the only the only debatable thing in Smash 4 was the... Uh, I mean, we, we went through the Halberd Delfino bullshit phase, right? That For like a week. Months. For like a week. Yeah, 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 you know. I mean, I, the first Apex, Apex 2015, Halberd... And, I don't know if Delfino was legal, but yeah. Halberd was. Which was some bullshit because Diddy could kill with up throw up air at like fucking thirty or forty on that stage with rage. It was total horseshit. Anyway, um, you know so we went through the Halberd Delfino phase. Duck Hunt. That stage sticked a while. Sticks for way too long. 
that did stick for way too long and um that was a very toxic stage and it didn't it, it took a while but there were some players that abused it and we finally were just like okay well are we really gonna <laughs> compete on the stage um but you know, and so Smash Four took it was a lot faster to like really trim the fat down and just be like, okay, this is our this is our rule set, right? Um, I think we stuck with double triplets, which I didn't agree with personally in Smash Four. But you know, I mean, I didn't even agree with it, and I, I was a Fox player in Smash Four, and it was broken for me. I would yeah. literally like sit there and be like, "Where you been?" And like, <laughs> I already decided. I already decided where I'm going. Right when I asked the question, I know where I'm going. I'm going to Dreamliner Battlefield. You decide which one we're going to, and like it would just be frame one. I I, I would practice out. I I got real good at this. Like they'll be like dream, and then like as I hear them pronouncing dr, I'd be like battlefield, and then like boom, pick battlefield, and it's just like like that's where we're going. Like it it didn't matter. You Dude. know what I mean? And like I I thought that was stupid. You got to rehearse the um, way you say what do you ban, so you don't seem suspicious too. Like you're bullshitting yeah, them. Yeah. You got to be mad chill. You got to be like yeah, what do you ban, bro? Like you can't be like suspicious about it. like yo, what do you ban? Like because you already have something like up your sleeve. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And I was also that guy in Smash Four that would be like. First game, it would be like Smashville. It'd be like, "Fuck no! Like we're not playing Smashville. I hate that stage. Like we're playing something else." They just um, have like the Pikachu face right after. They're like, "What? Yeah, what? Like, no Smashville." But, no one's ever said um, that before. But yeah, it's, it's it's so hard in this game. There's so many factors. We have hazards on and hazards off. Um, hazards on is like a. I think it can be tested. I don't know how legit it is. We we have no like. We have no data on it, right? So I, I personally think hazards on there, there's, there's, here's the big issues of hazard off rule set right now, and it's nobody's fault. It's just how the stages work. Every stage in ultimate, I don't know why they're fucking. It's huge. Even the blast zones on a lot of the stages, like there are very little stages with small blast zones, and even the stages with small blast zones are big. Um, so Yoshi's story is. Uh, the stage with the smallest blast zones, which is like why it's on the stage list. But wait a minute, now we have issues because it's another triplat and it's still a big stage. It's it's still like just big. You know what I mean? It's not like small. It's not like Melee Yoshi story where the stage is like small blast zones and it's condensed. It's just small stage as well, right? So um, you start getting these overlapping issues with hazards off where it's like, okay, pick your poison. Like, what do you want? If you take Yoshi's away and there's only one triplat, now you have no small stage. And even, I, I also think like one of the big problems with hazards off is actually how smashville works is because the platform not moving so smashville is the only small stage on the entire stage list like in terms of like stage size right so you think to yourself well i'm going to take a projectile character to a small stage so i'm always next to them right but the thing about smashville it, it's very unique because it's the only stage in the game um, excluding Yoshi's Island, which I think at this point we're all agreed that it's not going to be a legal stage at all, right? Um, we had the experimental phase with Yoshi's Island. It was the single platform, very big, but had all those crazy slants. Um, everyone, that that's out of the question now. So now you have the small stage, but it's a single platform, but it's in the middle. So it, I've seen it, a it lot basically of people... takes up the entire stage. Right, which is really strong for projectile characters, yeah. <laughs> particularly, which is funny because you would think that you don't want to, you would want to take a projectile character there. But the thing is, center stage control in Smashville is the strongest on Smashville. Like, you you can go if you control center stage on any other stage, it's not as strong as Smashville because Smashville has that platform, and we even talked about it earlier, where you cannot do an aerial through a platform. So now think of like think of a snake or any character that has very good horizontal zoning right they have very good horizontal pressure but they have a platform above them but this platform is now above them in the center of the stage the strongest part of the stage because if you get hit at the center stage you could just not even be in disadvantage you could just be back in neutral depending on your percent or if you're at the center stage you are the farthest away from the blast zones like just mathematically distance wise the center stage is the strongest part of the stage and now you have a platform over, over your head so even if your character has shit anti-airs, like you literally have a built-in anti-air through a stage, right? And then you're pressuring out horizontally, right? So it's like now you're thinking like shit, this this character that has really good horizontal pressure, I can't take them to the small stage to like be next to him all the time because it's like a it's like yes, the stage is small, but if you ever get center stage control, it's really hard to crack the egg. And now you're just fighting on really big stages with really big blast zones, right? Yeah. Unless you have Yoshi's, which then again you kind of come back to this like it's like this loop of like there's always going to be an issue like there's too many big stages there's that's why too many triplets 
that's why I'm always leading back to like less is more. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. you add more stages because you're thinking you're you're coming up with some sort of solution to other stages problems, but it's never quite enough because it always brings some sort of other variable, right? Or it has the same variable as another stage. So like it just ends up getting like just becoming really clustered and like a lot of the stages like serve a much more similar purpose than expected or the stage serves a different purpose than you thought it would. Like it's extremely difficult. And that's why I'm always down to like trim down the stage list, at least with what the general ultimate stage list is like right now. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not easy because you have a lot of people to please and there's a lot right. of different opinions with smash specifically. And I think, uh, for some like, reason, the smash community oh, is always like, like, it's like, it's like we said, like we dealt with even all the way back to melee, we dealt with, uh, rainbow crews and like all these ridiculous stages that are very they started competing with items on. Yeah. You like, know what I mean? Like at the very, very beginning, obviously, which, right. All the melee things is understandable. That's legitimately like the start, like, with 64, you didn't even have, like, those uh, ch the choice. It was just items or no items at that point. Um, stage, this, there's barely any stages to choose from. So what I'm getting at is, like, the growing pains with melee make a lot more sense. But the thing is, we've... We went through this two more times after. Like, yeah. So it makes it really hard to get, like, a legit, competitive, consistent stage list. If we're falling for the same... We're making the same mistakes every smash game <laughs> so like yeah we can't get ahead like so of course people are going to try to have wario wear an ultimate or like uh you know like multiple slants or multiple triplats or like it, so it's hard to work with these people <laughs> because like right. there, it, so many people have different opinions and a lot of people just think the more the better and like they don't think anything past that right and even just like you talking about slants let's let's talk about you know what let's really break down like what a stage is right like so obviously platform layout is going to be the first thing you anyone's going to think about when it comes to a stage right so you have you have to think of platform layout you have to think of the actual size of the stage right then you have to think of horizontal blast zones and then vertical blast zones right and then we get into the like the trickier stuff we get into walls we get into slants. Now, a lot of people don't think slants change the game that much, but they actually do. Um, shorter characters are a lot harder to, to corner pressure on slants. So think of like, um, on like Yoshi's Island, when that was legal, that's like, that was the most drastic slant. Pichu could literally fit in that pocket. Imagine <laughs> trying to corner pressure like Pichu or Olimar on Yoshi's Island. You have like, a handful of options and they have, they have everything. like, they they know how to deal with that. If you're like, if your whole move set gets cut by like eighty percent while they're on right. this slant, in terms or of like, like yeah, and if you have to like sink a fucking aerial like extremely low to the ground or something like that, just to like barely hit the top of their shield. So basically, right? you're or, giving yourself one timing instead right. of like in general. Generally, Smash has like so much ambiguous, crazy timings, and it's not that easy. But when you add something like that, you're basically like playing a very simple game from the small character's eyes. Right, exactly. And, I mean, I kind of get why you would want slants for variety, so to speak. And this, here, here's the issue with Smash, okay? Now, Smash, you know, one of the big reasons why it has the viewership it has is the IP is broken, right? So your, your, your viewers, your viewer base is huge, right? Your competitor base is nowhere near the size of the viewer base, right? So here's the here's the thing that the TOs have to like kind of go up against, right? So it's like, do I appeal? Like, do I go towards the opinions of the more casual competitive slash casual part of the Smash community, right? Where they want Fountain of Dreams. They want they want like a nine stage list. So like there's <laughs> so much variety when they're watching their favorite players duke it out with their favorite Nintendo characters, right? And like there's there's so many different stages that they're seeing, right? Like that's what they want. And even Tweak touched up on this. The the higher up the totem pole you go in terms of competitors, one trend you'll usually see is the top level players want a smaller stage list. Now, why is that? Well, it's their career on the line and they don't want to get fucking bullshitted by some dumb stage. <laughs> like they just, they, they want to play on like a five stage list or 
I've even seen extreme stage lists like where in like Japan where they have like a three stage list. It's literally like Battlefield, Final Destination, and like Pokemon PS3. Stadium too. Yeah, yeah, like just the, like just those three. Like, um, you know what I mean? Or maybe even you can throw in Smashville or something like that, right? Like it's just three stages, very simple. Or you can go with like a five stage list. I think five stage list is like the best. No, and even like if you know me, I've I'm pushing to test hazards on, and one of the big reasons why I'm trying to push that is because it's like a it's an in between. If you asked me like what I actually wanted, I would just want a hazards off five stage list. But I know that when you take into account the the like the viewership and stuff like that, like people want to see like hype stages or different stages, right? So it's like with with my like my particular hazards on rule set, it has fountain on there which is like everyone fucking loves fountain dude like you know it's a beautiful stage right um i mean hell even i love fountain but like so it's like you with like from so my personal hazards on stages is like um smash and it fixed the it fixes the whole like smashville being good for projectiles like they can kind of camp on the side platform but it eventually comes towards the center yeah. right? and then, like it forces interactions whatnot right so it's like smashville small battlefield battlefield final town and fountain like that's my six stage list hazards on that i don't think is like better than every other stages but i think it deserves to be tested kind of deal right um but yeah it's like it, it's it's like and that's why stageless is such a controversial topic like everyone wants a bunch of stageless but like these top level competitors they want it simplified and they want it consistent um and like me and gavin had to deal with this so many times like when we we're traveling to all these different tournaments and it's like we're going through his bracket and it's just like oh shit wait is yoshi's legal here yeah. or is violet legal here like what are you banning against this dude like wait because because this character like you definitely ban yoshi's but if, if it's not legal then you don't have to waste the ban on yoshi's and you know what i mean like the the fact that it's changing all the time and even like when gavin's playing a character like wario when you're looking at the when you're looking at the timer, right, if it's set at eight minutes or set at seven minutes, like, obviously, he can look at the timer and really get the number down and do the math in his head. That's not hard. But obviously, when he's focusing on, like, reacting through all these different neutral interactions or whatnot, if he can quickly glance and see that the, the clock's at, like, six, that means, like, half waft is online, right? Like, or close to being online. And he can just see that one number, six, if the timer's eight minutes. But then if the timer's seven minutes, that number changes from six to five, right? And, like... It could be one of his first matches, and you can just be like, "Well, fuck, what tournament am I at?" Like yeah. I'm at one every other fucking weekend, right? Like, so it's like stuff like that is very frustrating when it's not consistent. Well, that's so, the thing too. Even at majors, like the most important of tournaments ever, setups will have different timers every time. These sets are all for PGR. These are like top, like bracket sets. It's because pe- there's not enough attention being paid to the stage list. Uh. Major tournaments will have different timers. Like, I haven't had a tournament where that wasn't the case. Obviously, the stream setup is going to have the right rule set, but like, there's a bunch of setups at these tournaments, so it's just how it is. It's tough. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping you know, with enough time, we'll have at least some some sort of consistency, at least something close to it. Because right now, with like the, my experience of offline tournaments, it's it's very difficult it's like getting ready to play a different game every tournament yeah and i i am on the boat in terms of like slimming the stage list down i wish we had like seven even seven to me is pushing um i personally am a fan of like a five or six i think that's a really good in between i also i also even favor the three stage list over the like nine stage list or you know or the eight stage list i'm just like those these big stages i just don't really agree with um but i do i do understand you know but like for me i come from more of like a competitor viewpoint coach viewpoint so like that's why i think that but and even the timer not like let's talk about the timer affecting how it affects like every match not just like someone playing wario looking for waft timers right like yeah so it's like i actually think we should test six minute timers in my opinion just because like here's the thing uh, the argument is like okay if we do six minute, everyone's gonna start timing out. I'll tell you right now, right fucking now, that Sonic player you're playing against, whether it's six minute, five <laughs> minute, ten minutes, twenty minutes, he's timing you out. Like he's trying to time you out. It doesn't fucking matter if it's six minutes or eight minutes or whatever. Like top level players, they're going to play the play style that is optimal for them. The timer is not gonna well, affect them. The thing is about six minutes. If it's a six minute timeout compared to a seven minute timeout, then it's already shorter, guaranteed. Uh, right. And 
that's also if you're viewing timeouts as an objectively bad thing, which is already like, all right, figure out what's going on, right? Because like, why do you think timeouts are bad? Like, we shouldn't be catering a stage list because of something subjective, right? Like, oh, this, we don't want this character to be successful, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're viewing timeouts as bad, then sure, make it fucking 30 minutes. <laughs> right no one right. will ever time out don't worry um but yeah i would be open to testing that too but here's something i really want to point out is so with eight minutes less timeouts will happen right there's just more time um the games will last longer than seven minutes but here's the thing there is not many timeouts in ultimate um but the intention to time out through someone's play style is very common, right? Just because it doesn't go to time doesn't mean they didn't have that intention at some point of the match. That's just part of Smash. It's, you know, it's a, a, it's a, it's a very successful style to play safe. Um, time is a resource. Yeah, so the reason a lot of these matches aren't going to time are because one of the two players is just is breaking um like because they have to like i play with intention time. to time out if i feel it's necessary pretty often but uh, my opponent often throws out too many risks or just kind of breaks down and like you know they just fall in, they fall into your hands a lot when when you have this style and you're just outplaying them right so you're going to take that opportunity and the match is going to end because they're going to in a way, they're just throwing at that point because like the lead is so out of their hands. It would go to timeout if they just, you know, like if they stopped interacting, but they're so far behind at some point or they just fall apart. They start forcing it. This is why timeouts don't happen as much. It's just the mental fortitude isn't there 99% of the time for at least one of the players. Right. Um, but the intention is there very often, which is very hard to see because like, you know, not everyone's like looking at the game in that way. Um, and that's why I'm a, not a fan of eight minutes because it's just it's too much. Um, seven minutes, I think it's fine. Um, yeah. But if, I mean, I'm a if fan somehow of seven eight minutes became yeah. universal, at least it's universal, right? Like, right. it's not different every time. Um, but yeah, I would be open to trying six minutes. I don't think timeouts are that much of a problem with seven, but six right. is at least better than eight. Um, so like one of the two, please. <laughs> right, and it's just even the, the structure of time. Essentially, it's like, and the reason why people kind of overextend when the time is about to go out is because they're going to lose. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like at, at the end of the day, whoever doesn't have the percent lead, they need to take the stock in some way or form right or they need to catch up percentage wise and deal more damage to you if you guys are on the same stock to do that <laughs> to do that to someone that is running away from you you have to take a guess you have to commit into yeah. your opponent and not and every player commitment. not every player's gameplay is surgical enough to inch forward to evening it out or getting their own lead they're going to do right. it a lot less safer like it's going to happen right so and yeah the thing is, timeouts aren't happening every time but the intention is definitely there more than you'd ever know <laughs> right and like think of an eight minute timer right so if there's an eight minute timer but the match goes to like a minute even a minute 30 right and the other person's like notices there's two minutes left or a minute 30 left and like shit like i need to start like pressuring this guy at like bare minimum pressure this guy more right because like say both of them were kind of just fucking running away from each other right which happens a lot um and then it's like from that point the other person has to start committing and then you know he tries to commit slowly but surely and then loses, right? He just doesn't get it. He, there's like a minute 20 left on the clock. If that was a six minute match, guess when that other guy that's losing has to start making the pressure points yeah. and making the commitments? Uh, you know, a good four minutes into the match because there's only two minutes left. And he's, <laughs> that, that's, that's his resource. So time is the resource to the person that is losing. You guys got to view it like that. So it's like, oh, I'm losing. I have X amount of time to get the lead or kill him or, or you know what i mean get the lead or just straight beat him right so it's like viewing it like that and i've seen so many games get to like around that one minute mark and then like you see it in the gameplay where it's like because essentially the person that's losing they're 
camping the other person that's winning to test them. That is quite literally a test. At top level play, the other person should win the test every single time, right? But at lower level play, you're going to notice that's like someone gets frustrated because it's like, oh, well, I have the lead. Like, he's camping me. What the fuck? Like, yeah. this is bullshit. And then they, <laughs> they crack, right? Um, that's going to happen a lot at low mid level play. But when you get that to that higher slash top level play, um, the person winning is not going to approach you like, yeah. <laughs> or, or they're, they're playing like shit if they do, because that's just not a thing. It's just like, well, no, well, I have to leave. Like they might make a commitment here and there, like to kind of like just be a part of neutral with some burst options or whatnot, but they're not going to run you down for the most part. Like they're, they're going to play on that safer back foot because that's what they should be doing. Um, and it's just like, yeah, again, like if you have a eight minute match and it, it goes to like a minute 10, but if you have a six minute match that goes to timeout, the six minute match was faster. Yeah. Like but actually, it's just people, faster. people are only against like lowering the timer because they think timeouts are a bad thing. Where it's like, you know, defensive play and timeouts, like they're only a bad thing if you think they are. Um, but if you want faster, if you want faster tournaments, if you want faster matches, like it's, it's faster no matter what overall if you run a tournament with an eight minute timer and run a tournament with a six minute timer it's very likely the six minute timer tournament would be faster (laughs) right right and like it not like there's not a lot of people that even know how to time people out like at yeah because i can kind of see the the teal's perspective of like um oh man like if I have eight minute timer, people just run at each other, which is like not true at top level, right? But like, oh, but if it's a six minute timer, all these lower level players are gonna go to time instead of like just running at each other going two minutes. But like, honestly, a lot of like low and mid level players like don't even know how to time out. They just, they just don't know like the process. They it's don't it's know hard to, to, it's hard to manage the resources. Like, right. And like play surgical enough to like commit really, like not commit a lot. Yeah. And someone in the chat asked, why not even go to a five minute timer? It's like, for me, it's like, I never, you, you never want to test stuff drastically. You always want to like, kind of at least ease it in, in terms of testing. And even like the way I'm explaining it, like, yeah, it does sound like six minute time, but I could be wrong. You know, I like all, all I want really is like some testing and I just, and that's another thing about the stage list too. We've had a lot of data and we still don't have a stage list. That's that's to me that's another kind of like frustrating thing that's more so on topic but yeah and it's just like I just want something consistent. I personally just want a smaller stage list. Um whether it be hazards on or off just like just something consistent and it just sucks right now too because like we have all this data and then boom this Wi-Fi era hit like we can't it it it, it essentially just felt feels like a big pause in terms of competition for competitive smash like there obviously like there's all the wi-fi tournaments going on but it's just not the same right like it's not the same as offline so it's really hard to test things too on wi-fi because of how smash gg smash gg works in terms of like i don't think they have a lot of options to like alternate rule sets i think this wi-fi arrow would have been a fantastic time to start testing stuff out right because it's like oh we're, we're doing a bunch of things that like we're doing for like fun and they kind of matter but they kind of don't right yeah. that's the perfect time to test shit but yeah because like, wi-fi right we have. isn't like a competitive environment and but at the same time you're playing the same game might as well like test some stuff out i i agree yeah so it's just it kind of sucks that we're like in this position where we can't really test it but we should be testing it and yeah you know, like just the wi-fi or in general just and sucks, since but... it's all we have some people are taking it taking it as serious as they would offline Especially because like sometimes there's still money involved for them, so like right. they don't want to experiment. They're playing to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, that and that's another hard thing about just like this whole process too, right? Like we didn't have a testing phase. Like right when Ultimate drops, guess what? Boom, we're in there. Like first PGR tournament in a month or two. Like gates are open. You know, like there we don't have like as a community. There's no like okay guys. Nothing official for six months. We're gonna test things out, you know. Really make sure we're gonna get the stage list right and blah 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 blah. Like there, there is none of that, right? There's, there, and I mean, a big part of that is just like Nintendo not being a part of it structurally. So it's kind of just like it's a bunch of these tos that are not coming together under one banner kind of deal, which is understandable, right? It's like a business where like everyone's just trying to make some money or whatnot, or just trying to do stuff for the community. 
tournaments and it's all in these different areas so it's like you're just going to have all these bunch of different tournaments and no one's going to stop for anyone else right so it's like we kind of just like right when the game drop it's open the floodgates we're we're in there so we kind of like it's and this is something the smash community has to do a lot in general this is for melee and whatever the current smash game is is we just have to learn as we go right we just kind of just through our experience and adapt from there yeah a lot of people are like you know like asking like should we be encouraging or discouraging timeouts it's neither like you shouldn't be like tilting towards like some sort of specific gameplay or play style because like there's no right or wrong way to play the game but in terms right. of like a weekend long tournament that like you know those tournaments last a long time or like a big tournament or like a local will last all day or like you know a a tournament takes a while so the rule set is important because it's a competitive environment you want it to be universal you want you want it to be like as fair as possible like and then the timer you want that to be consistent you don't want the games to last too long you don't want them to be too short so the timer is important there so the thing about eight minutes is like it's like sometimes like with the defensive play styles like the tournaments could last really long but a similar thing could be happening if you just shave a minute off or something you know what i mean especially right. which like, is why when testing things you got to do it in like short increments you can't like changing the the rule set by like two minutes like i i, I personally wouldn't do that like yeah. that that's like a humongous drastic change right so and I mean, someone in the chat did bring up like the viewership is also a very pr important perspective. We brought that up many, many times. It's pretty much the reason why Smash is so big. We don't have like, in terms of like money resources, like Smash doesn't have anything crazy because like we don't have developer support, right, for the competitive scene. So what does Smash thrive off of is thrives off the viewership, right? So it's like, yeah, that is also a thing to take into account. But I feel like most people, they just don't understand. Like when they see time, right? Like they see, they see that word and they're just like, oh my God, like that was so boring or whatever. But then you don't, like nine out of 10 of those viewers don't even know that like oh they watched an eight minute match that went down to a minute that was literally longer than the six minute match that went to time like i it's just it's 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 this weird situation with a lot of gray areas because you're you're bringing in competition with casual viewership right so and that now you're mixing two worlds together and they both thrive off of each other but like because of they thrive off of each other there's going to be like this huge gray area of like well we gotta because if you went if you I'll tell you right now, if TOs just totally said, you know what, fuck all the players. We're going to just totally um, cater towards the viewership, right? I'll tell you right now, a lot of players won't be uh, happy about that. <laughs> and um, some players probably wouldn't even go to their tournaments. Oh, yeah. shit, now people aren't going to my tournaments because I catered towards the viewers that I'm getting on Twitch, and I really need these viewership numbers. But wait a minute. Wow. Uh-oh, Tweak's not going to my tournament. Leo's not going to my tournament. Sam Samsora's not going to my tournament. Now no one's going to my tournament and there's no top players signed up, which means like the regular entrance, that's dropping too. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Now no top players are at my tournament and no one wants to watch my tournament. You see how like that can swivel and like like shit can just roll downhill so quick and you're you're trying to like balance all these different aspects of the tournament, right? Because even like just just TOing in general, like there's the physical tournament itself, there's the broadcast of the tournament, how many streams do you have up? And it's just all like the rule and the why I'm bringing this up is the rule set affects all of these things. You know what I'm saying? It, it affects everything. So um, it's, it's, it's the backbone and there's no right or wrong answer, which is why this is such a controversial topic. This is why you can kind of talk about rule sets forever because there's so many factors going into it. But I think... I think personally, generally, you want to, you should kind of cater a little bit more towards the competitors, in my opinion, um, because they're like the backbone of it. Like at the end of the day, if someone stops watching Smash because they can't see like Yoshi's Story or Yoshi's Island or Fountain of Dreams, and like, then I, I just don't feel like that's a thing. Like, I don't feel like someone's going to stop watching Smash because, like, a stage got banned. Yeah, I feel you know like I mean? the the casual viewers, when they are looking for competitive Smash to watch, you know, they're, like, they, like, find out about it or they're interested in it and they want to see what's up. I feel like they're going to, to, like, 
if they actually get into playing it from watching it, they're gonna bend to whatever the competitors do because I think they'll have some sort of respect for like what they think is competitive or you know they they like they don't have like any sort of expectations going into it, you know what I mean? Like a a casual viewer isn't gonna go into like a a Smash tournament stream and be like, okay, they should have these items legal, but not these ones, because I I don't like those ones. You know what I mean? They're not gonna be right. upset if like their rule set isn't like the rule set they use when they like hang out with their friends. They're they you know they especially nowadays like esports is a very you know it's a thing, it's a popular thing. Everyone knows about it at this point. So I don't think they're going to be too caught off guard by anything. Maybe they'll be a little surprised, but I don't think it's going to I don't think it's going to anger anyone except a weird casual extremist. <laughs> right, right. And on the other side of the coin, it's like if you don't if you piss enough players off, like really like hyper competitive players in terms of like crazy stages or whatnot right like your tournament takes a way bigger hit than like the handful of people or the group of people that are like oh i don't see fountain of dreams like i don't want to watch this tournament you know what i'm saying like i i just feel like you generally just want to cater more towards the players in a lot of these situations and yeah i mean for the most part like i feel like when most people even so like i'm trying to it, it's hard for me and you i feel to kind of like oh Let's let's try to be in the perspective of someone that watches Smash casually, right? Because obviously we don't watch Smash casually, like we're part of like the tournament scene or whatever, right? Um, so it's like, so what I try to do is like, okay, I watch other games casually, right? And like even for me, if I'm gonna watch another game that I don't even play casually, like for the most part, I want to see like really good gameplay. And I think that's a general thing, right? No one wants to tune in at, to a video game stream and watch someone like suck, unless that's like the pinnacle of the stream like oh wow watch these guys really suck like haha that's funny laugh at them right like so i just i, I feel like i feel like making the stage this big more so because of the viewers is just so bad like yeah. i just i just don't agree with it but yeah i think i mean in terms of stage list it's pretty much it right yeah i mean pretty much covered all the bases there's a lot to talk about my the things i want are just consistency regardless of what it is like i'll try my best to work with it as long as it's you know relatively reasonable it's just it's just hard when there's differences every time yeah online or offline i i compete in a handful of online tournaments and those are all different too um i mean so if, if you had to if you had to make a stage list if you if you had the power Oh yeah, god. You had the power. And you could just be like, you know what? Everyone shut I the fuck get to up. Decide. <laughs> I decide this shit. What what would your what would your stage list be? Yo, what's good, bro? Yeah, He's we back. back. He's back. <laughs> okay, so if I got had to make a stage list, PS2. Goaded. Goaded stage for sure. Facts. Facts. <laughs> uh FD. Battlefield. There's no way I'm stopping there, right? You could. I might. The thing is, there's stages like I've got used to and I like, but I don't know like if it's if I like them because they should be on the stage list or if I just be bodying people. Right, right. Like, do you remember? Do you remember what you told me about Kalos and I didn't even realize it? Or was it was it you that told me about how I play on Kalos? Someone told me that I have like a crazy win rate on Kalos specifically, and I never noticed. Yeah, you're really good on Kalos. And like I just like really good. But I I don't think that stage like that stage is iffy. You know what I mean? Right, right. I don't know. If you have a three stage list, then you would have no bands, right? I think. I get, I, yeah, that sounds crazy. Yeah, generally, man. if there aren't bands with like three, that sounds crazy. Yeah, I like right. Town and City too, but like, I actually think Town and City's good in this game. I don't mind Town and City. I, I think I think Town and City definitely deserves to be on the stage list. I wish the ceiling was short, like it was in Smash Four, so we would have yeah, like a, you know what I mean? Like it, it would just add more variety because it just feels like every stage has a ta high ceiling in this game. Like it just feels like a general thing. Like I, I can't really think of a stage where I'm like, yeah, I'm taking you here because of the low ceiling. Like kind of <laughs> PS2. I know, I know, Ding Dong works at certain percentages, 
like better percentages on PS2 for Donkey Kong, but like, yeah. That's the like more I like talk about it and think stages. about it, I'm fine with a lot of stages, so like not like a crazy amount, but I don't like slants, man. I don't like slants and ultimate specifically. A big feel at good like, on you. The hurt boxes and hitboxes are so like painfully like accurate accurate maybe like or maybe like there's just a lot of small characters and they're like even smaller like i don't know what it is specifically it's probably a mix of everything but slants are just way more of a factor than they've ever been like if you go all the way back to brawl like i feel like moves were definitely like hitting more often regardless of the character size and slants and i and now that the game is like you know more like like it's, it's way it's updated and it's newer you know some hitboxes are crazy but it's harder to hit small characters than ever i feel like and that's just not okay yeah. it's not okay like abusing like slants and like hurt boxes and like just being impossible to hit that's when i'm like okay like there's no way you can argue this like this has to go you know what i mean so like no right. lilac uh no yoshi story axe um i will literally let anything else go i will let anything else be on the stage list just not slant you know over i don't know if i would want both ps2 right, and you gotta Nova, pick one or the other in my opinion but like i know for sure that i if 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 i have the energy to i'll bitch about slants how about that <laughs> it's fair it's fair i mean i think the 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 quote-unquote standard conservative five stage list would be uh, Final, Battlefield, uh, PS2, mm -hmm. Town, and Smashville, right? Like, that's, that's like, the standard, like... I, li I like it, five. man. I like it. Because those are the starters, right, for every tournament, essentially. Like, that that's one thing that's consistent, is those fives are starters. Dude, the thing then, is, like, guys, I like Yoshi's story, but, like, dude, like, slants? I'm not about it, dude. I'm not about these damn slants. Good on slant. Like, and I love Kalos, but if we got rid of it, I'm not going to be too mad. I don't even. I don't. I don't love Kalos, but for some reason, <laughs> you're everyone, really good on Kalos. Everyone tells me I stay winning on that stage, so I'm like, cool. I also but, think Wario's just really good on that stage too. Like where the platforms are positioned, like it's really good for bike. Um, I mean, Sonic ooh. is amazing on Ka Kalos. Is like, it's like a, it's it's got Duck Hunt vibes, but it's not like you don't have that tree. It's right? not like, extreme. You don't yeah. have that super high tree, but like people will be camping on Kalos. I do really love hard. walls. Walls are hype. Walls are very fun to do. Like, just fun in general because of, you know, wall ha, like, wall jumps and all that stuff. Wall Giddy, clings. Giddy wall cling is just fun, man. Yeah, it's just cool. It's broken. And, like, it gives me, like, a, like a really consistent way to get off the ledge with, like, wall, wall cling into fucking, like, instant back airs and shit. Right, and see, that's something you lose, right? When you, uh, yeah. if you go with, like, the conservative five standard you know starter stage list or whatnot you pretty much lose access to walls unless you uh unless you allow like the battlefield version or like the omega version of stages or whatever right then you might be able to get like a final with wall or yeah. a battlefield with a wall yeah i'm fine with anything that we've done except just slants. no slants yeah <laughs> let's get them out of here I've, I've after talking about it i've decided that I'm open to a lot of stuff except that. No, war no WarioWare. On I see the occasional WarioWare thing. Ooh. That's oh, that's nice. If you do legalize it, I will make sure to ruin your experience if we play against it. If we if we play each other on it. I had a pocket incineroar oh, yeah. just for just for WarioWare, just in case like somebody tries. Same. To I'll, uh, pull, I'll, I'll pull out my incineroar. Yeah. <laughs> I have I have wins. many 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 hours on that character for no reason. He is fun. He's very fun. If he was like just a little bit faster, the game breaks. That's, that's my main. I, I used yeah. him at first too. That's my main. Yeah, I I've used him so much. He's he's a, he's so funny and a, and he's really fun. And a lot of his moves are just really good. Yes, but yeah, like we. Move. Like we talked about, we talked about this last time. Base stats, bro. They have joined straight Trash. garbage. Like, <laughs> yeah. If he was fast in like the ground or the air, just one of the two, he would be so broken. If you gave him speed in one department, he would actually be like a 
top tier character. That's how it is opinion. for so many characters. It's just just one department. Like yeah, like just one thing that you're abusing. Like I'm, a, I'm even a his walk it. is slow. I'm gonna mention you know, it. has the slowest walk. <laughs> well, yeah, I would expect that. He's the slowest run. God, dude, <laughs> slowest ever. I care. Dude, this guy is just slow as shit. <laughs> but yeah, like so, uh, so Northern Cape. What do you guys think about that cape or that stage? stage? Dope. Yeah, it's pretty. And dope. it got nice music. I can power through the background for some nice music. I don't care. Like, I mean, I'm playing Sephiroth on it too. Like, I'm just like invincible. <laughs> like, I'm so powered up. Like the the stage layout is fine, and it kind of has walls too. And I love walls. Fine. It's just I get the to background, and I can play through the back. Like. It's not that distracting. It may be distracting to like people who aren't playing, or I can't speak for everyone. I but, feel like, like it is more just... like when I'm playing, I don't even notice the background. Like I'm not looking at. The I don't background. either. I'm lo- I'm looking at the opponent's character. I could care less about the ba- what's happening in the background. I'm too focused on like a bunch of frame perfect combos and. Shit. That's what I'm saying. Like you're already talking about some. It's too bright, huh? <laughs> I don't even know what stage I'm playing on. <laughs> I just know it got platforms here. Yeah. <laughs> right, and it's like uh, we've dealt with Final Destination Flash forever, right? Like the the blinding. Yeah, light, maybe like... we're just like, maybe our eyes are just like irreparably damaged, like <laughs> <laughs> from Smash Bros. So we we just they can release a stage that's just mad explosions everywhere, and we'll just be like, "Yo, this is hype." <laughs> stage. Our eyes are just like bleeding <laughs> while we're playing. <laughs> 